If you're in the market for a new small car, well, Rebecca, you're pretty much sport for choice, aren't you, these days? Because there's just so many excellent models to choose from. That's right, Matt. However, to help you find the best one for you, we've brought together our three favourites. The Volkswagen Polo, Kia Rio and Ford Fiesta. So then, let's start with the Fiesta and practicality. And as you can probably tell, it's not exactly the biggest super mini here in the back. Yeah, looking at you now, I can see that you do look quite cramped. It's a little bit silly. <laughs> it's a bit snug back here. Yeah, Just it is. Just a bit. And one of the reasons is you've got this sloping roof lines. It feels a bit cramped inside. There's not that much knee room. And the doors, the rear doors, they don't open particularly wide. So Yeah, and the trouble is, is when people are downsizing from a larger car and they still want to be able to drive their friends around, give them lifts, they're really going to notice the difference here. Yeah, so the Fiesta definitely isn't the best car for giving your mates a lift in. It's also got a bit of a problem with its boots. Now, the boots on all these cars, roughly the same size, 280 litres. But the Fiestas, as you can see, if you fold the chairs down, the rear seats, you've got this big ridge there. Tell me why that's a problem, Matt. Okay, let's say you want to carry something big, like maybe not a wardrobe, but something like a <laughs> no, washer dryer. No, there. not in there, no. <laughs> And you want to just put it in the car and slide it to the back, you can't because of that. Yeah, that is going to be a bit of an issue, isn't it? Yeah. The cubbies are okay, but the glove box is a little bit on the small side. Okay, so really what we're saying then is that the Fiesta, it's not the most practical super mini. No, let's see what the Rio's like. Okay. Okay, so here's the Rio. I'd like to use you, Matt, to demonstrate the space in the back because I'm quite small, so I can get comfortable in most cars. Is that because you're like five foot four and a half? I think, I think you might have mentioned it once or twice. Just get in. <laughs> so, what's it like? Well, do you know what, actually, for, for a Super Mini, I've, I've got loads of room. Obviously, I'd rather be sat in the driver's seat, but if I had to, I'd be fine back yeah. here. Wouldn't real. Cubbies are really good as well. There's a really large glove box. Yeah, you, would you be able to fit a whole bunch of bananas in there? Maybe two. <laughs> and the door bins are really big as well. I know how much you like those for your bottles of water. Oh, touche, touche. Now, before we get too carried away, though, I want to show you something. Come on. Now, the boot is actually a good size, but look at this. It's got a big lip, and I know you don't like those, do you? No, these really bother me. If you're lifting something heavy into the boot, you can easily do your back in if the lip is this big. Plus, the seats, they don't fall flat, just like in the Fiesta. No, it's a bit annoying. But on the Polo, you don't have that problem, and I'll show you why now. Sounds good. Now, if you look in there, Rebecca, you'll see flat low bay, and the reason is, is that we've got the seat scrubs that fold out. Also, on some of the Polos, you get this false floor, so it raises up the boot floor, and look, no boot lip. Yes, I like that. Plus, if you sit in the back, you can get quite comfortable. There's pretty much the same amount of room as in the Kia. Yeah, it's, it's a very spacious car for such a, such a small thing. And the cubbies are good as well. The cubbies are as good as on the Kia too. Yep, yeah, so all in all, Matt, practicality-wise, the Polo's the best, yep. followed by the Kia, yep. and the Fiesta's last. That's right. At this end of the market, though, value for money is even more important than practicality. And here, there is one winner, the Kia Rio. So then, Rebecca, come on, tell us, why is this Kia such good value? Well, it's the cheapest to buy, and at just over £10,000, you can go for the One Air model, which comes with everything that you need. Bluetooth, air conditioning, USB interface. Yeah, it's pretty well equipped, isn't it? And we mustn't forget as well, being a Kia, you've got that excellent seven-year warranty, and the other cars, going to get three years, don't you? Yes, that's true. And it's got really good safety as well. Six airbags are standard. If you wanted curtain airbags in the cheaper bottles of Volkswagen Polo, you'd have to pay extra. That's pretty mean of VW, isn't it, eh? <laughs> but I should point out, before you get too carried away, Ford Fiesta, seven airbags are standard. And I know it costs more and the less price than this Kia, but you walk into a Ford dealership, have a bit of a haggle, you should be able to get the price down. Good luck doing that in a Kia dealer or a VW dealer. They're a lot meaner, aren't they? I agree, but not everybody likes to haggle. I do. I oh, know you do. It's like a blooming sport for you, isn't it? <laughs> and I should point out as well, the Ford, you can get some pretty cool kit on it as well, like the sync system, so you can hook up your mobile phone to the stereo and it'll read out your text messages as you're driving along, which is pretty cool. It is very cool and they're all really brilliant features. However, if you want those, you are going to have to pay more money. And at this end of the market, I think that's a bit extravagant. I always thought Rebecca liked a bit of extravagance. 
but she's right. And the Kia isn't just the best value either. According to the 2013 Driver Power Owner Satisfaction Survey, it's the more reliable car of the Trio 2. Thing is, the Fiesta is a nicer car to sit in with its more modern interior and soft touch dash. It's only narrowly beaten by the Polo, which is the poshest of the three cars here, and it has the most desirable image too. Matt, I never knew you were a badge snob. Shame on you. Now, before anyone asks, I am not a badge snob at all. I'm an impartial car reviewer, but I am partial. <laughs> very good. <laughs> yeah, very good. That's so funny. I am partial to the way this Polo drives because it does feel like a more grown-up car, but you're driving it. What do you reckon? It's very good to drive. It feels very comfortable. The controls are really light. The clutch is nice and light. Gears are easy. And the suspension is smooth as well. It absorbs the lumps and bumps in the road very well. Yeah, it is. It's very comfortable. But what about fun? Well, that's where it's lacking. It could do with a little bit more of that. And when you go around the corners, there's quite a lot of roll. Mm -hmm. So it's not a particularly fun car to drive. And I don't think it's quiet, but if you go for one of the entry-level engines, the 1.2, it's really noisy. The diesels are noisy as well. I do like the 1.2 TSI Turbo, but that one's a little bit expensive. So the Polo is good, but not quite sporty enough. And its engines aren't the best. Can the Rio do any better? Do you know what? The, the first thing I noticed when I come out of the Polo and into this car is that the suspension does feel noticeably a little bit firmer. Mm -hmm. To be fair, this car is actually riding on massive 17-inch alloys, which is a little bit extreme really for a Super Mini, and that doesn't help the ride. But it does feel less comfy than the Polo, and I don't actually think that it's it's really any sportier. No, I can feel that from the passenger seat as well. And it does feel quite slow. Yeah, you look, like, put my foot down. Yeah, Not nothing's, as, nah. no. <laughs> <laughs> in its defense though, the 1.1 does almost 90 miles to the gallon. That's incredible, isn't it? That yeah. 1.1 diesel engine. Another thing that I kind of like about this car is that it is, it's dead easy to drive. The controls are light, again, like the Polo. But one problem I do have is that the, the, these A-pillars and the rear windscreen, you know, that's quite small. I don't think the visibility is as good in this, so it's going to be a little bit harder to park or you know, negotiate through traffic. Yeah, I agree with you. It's close, but overall the Kia isn't quite as good to drive as the Polo. But how does the Fiesta compare? Personally, I reckon the Fiesta, out of the three cars, is the best to drive, but what do you reckon? Well, you would be right, because it's definitely the most agile, the most fun, and it's got a really sporty seating position. It makes you want to be a little bit cheeky. Yeah, I know what you mean. It does handles really well, doesn't it? Yet, it still rides brilliantly as well, so you can go over bumps, you don't notice them. In fact, I reckon the ride quality on this car can shame some much bigger cars. The engines are great too. The one litre EcoBoost that's fitted to this car feels like a little hot hatch and it returns over 60 miles to the gallon. I know, it's you know, three-cylinder, makes a nice little thrum, actually pretty punchy as well. So it's small, but it's fun, and you know, in a way, Rebecca's a little bit like you, isn't it? Are you flirting with me, Matt? If you go for the diesel, <laughs> it returns 85 miles to the gallon. Uh, that's really good. And another thing that I like about the Fiesta as well is that generally you have got pretty good all-round visibility, though if I'm going to complain about something, the back window is quite small. It's not as bad as on the Kia, but I don't think overall the visibility is quite as good as on the Polo. Come on, Matt, stop being boring. Small cars should be fun. They should also be cheeky. What, like me? Well, Rebecca, if it's cheeky you want, then the Fiesta is the best looking car here. The Kia is still pretty striking though, and so is the Polo, despite its more conservative design. But yes, I like the look of the Fiesta best as well. Right then, Rebecca, we've come to the point where we really need to rank these cars in order of our preference, so... For me, the Kia has to be third. Although it offers great value, it lacks the polish that the other two have. You know what, you're absolutely right. It's just not quite as posh as it as the Polo. And I think that's a great car if you're downsizing from a bigger vehicle. But it just, it just lacks that certain something, doesn't it? Yes, fun. Fun, that's right. <laughs> Which means our winner is the Ford Fiesta. It's got a great choice of engines, brilliant handling, and its cheeky looks 
make it the best super mini you can buy. Do you know what, Rebecca? I could not have said that better myself. So why didn't you, Matt? That's, it's your life. That's you why. You always like to have the last line. No, word. you do. No, you do. Now look at you now. No, you're doing it. No, but you're doing no, it. No, you are. You're trying to have the last line. You're always trying to have the no, last line. No, but you are now. Look, no, you're just no, proving. You're proving exactly what you're doing. No, you are. No.